Now, use Pestilent twice a day, see your dentist twice a year. Tonight from Hollywood, Lever Brothers Company presents the Pestilent Show with Bob Hope's special guest stars, Eddie Cantor, Red Skelton, Fibber McGee and Molly, Amos and Andy, and Walter Winchell. <laughs> Bob Hope is still on the high seas en route to England, and you'll hear him in person from London next Tuesday night. In his absence, we present an all-star cast of Bob Hope's friends, starting with our guest master of ceremonies, Eddie Cantor. Get up off your knees. Bob Hope is in here now. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Eddie, you know, this is quality to drop in and help Bob like this. Well, who could refuse? He left a note under my door, come down to NBC and get a surprise. Some surprise. They shove a script in my hand, point to the microphone, and that's not enough. Before I start, they make me brush my teeth with pepsi then. <laughs> but Eddie, yeah? what do you usually brush your teeth with? Pat Smooth and Beer. I got a sponsor, too. <laughs> Oh, but I'm only kidding. I'm very happy to help an old friend. By the way, Wendell, did Bob say anything before he left about uh, how much, uh, you know, uh, about the, did he, before he left, did he, leave, did he, huh? Anything at all? Yes, the, uh, the usual. I see. <laughs> Who shall I make it out to? You mean Bob isn't paying you anything for this, eh? When do you know that expression, a fool and his money are soon parted? Yes. <laughs> you are working for the original quiz kid. <laughs> I've known Bob for so long, I can tell you all his weak points and all his strong points. Well, uh, what are some of his strong points? Short joke, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, you're just jealous because Bob's going to... Princess Elizabeth's wedding. I'm not jealous, Wendell. The king asked me to attend his daughter's wedding, but I turned it down. Just turned it down. Said, I'm not go I don't want to go. Well, wait a minute. You turned down the king of England after he asked you to be a guest at his daughter's wedding? Who said anything about guests? He wanted me as a technical advisor. <laughs> Him with his two girls, amateur. <laughs> well, I, I thought Crosby was getting that job, Eddie. You know, he's quite a family man, too, you know. Crosby, are you kidding? With stalks, who know Hollywood best, it's Cantor, five to four. <laughs> Don't encourage me. I'm not going to do an encore. <laughs> anyway, I'll be represented at the wedding. I help Bob out with his wardrobe, you know. Oh, but Bob's so much bigger, Eddie. Why, he couldn't get into one of your suits. Who's talking about suits? I loaned him one of Ida's corsets. <laughs> Say, Eddie, do you think we ought to talk behind Bob's back like this? What'd you say? I said, do you think we ought to talk behind Bob's back like this? Why not? It's so nice and roomy. <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding about Ida's corset. I loaned him one of my suits. I really did. Well, I still don't see how Bob can wear your clothes. He's 35 pounds heavier than you are. Well, the tailor put an extra piece in it, Wendell. <laughs> Bob will look great at the wedding. He'd be the only one there wearing British morning trousers with a Scotch plaid seat. <laughs> Today, I don't feel too good. Of course, I always feel this way after I've had my distemper shots, you know. <laughs> I think I got a little fever. I took my temperature with more pressure cooker thermometer, and it said I was about ready to can. <laughs> well, I was able to do my work before I come to town, anyhow. I fed the chicken, I fed my horsey, I fed my pig. Pig. That reminds me, I ain't eat yet. 
Well, as soon as I find out why Bob Hope ain't on the air tonight, I'll warm my innards with some vittles. Well, let's see. wonder which studio it would be. Here's the rolling program. We'll skip that for now. <laughs> Maybe this man knows which studio Bob Hope broadcasts from. Howdy doody. <laughs> Could you tell me where the Pepsi Dent program broadcasts from? <laughs> Why, yes, you uh, go right through that door. Open it up first. Details, details. Speak up, I ain't no genius, you know. Wait, I'll take you in, Nutsy. You... Say, wait a minute, first, just fix your tie. Oh, thank you. Say, that's an unusual tie. Yeah, I got it out of the mail order catalog. You mean that you sat away and got that? No, I just cut it out and pasted it on. <laughs> This goon wants to see Bob Hope. Well, come on in, fella. No, oh, I better not. Oh, it's all right. Say, why are you blushing? I ain't blushing. It's my red flannel sneaking up on me again. <laughs> I'm sorry, fella, but Mr. Hope isn't here. No? He's on a boat bound for England. They finally chased him out of the country. <laughs> oh, no. No, he's appearing... He's appearing at the command performance of the King of England. England? I was there during the war, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, too, too bad you didn't get to the bomb shelter in time. <laughs> uh, you were in the army, you say. Uh, uh, an officer? No, I could have been an officer, though, if they'd have noticed the good work I did. But them generals never came around the guardhouse. Yeah. <laughs> they were too busy trying to talk to Howard Hughes, I guess. <laughs> You said Bob Hope won't be on the air tonight? That's right. Well, I don't know what my mom's going to do. She never goes to sleep till she hears Bob Hope. Well, he'll be on again next week. He's going to be awful sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me, will you? <laughs> This guy makes the mad Russian appear like Professor Einstein. <laughs> now, if you'll show me where it says that, I'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry I bothered you, but before I go... <clears throat> would you care for a little snort? <laughs> well, uh, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> you know... This is Eddie Cantor and the sportsman singing Civilization. Bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. Oh, no, 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 no. Bingo, bango, bongo, I'm so happy in the jungle I refuse to go. Don't want high prices, taxes, housing, shortage, worry and fear. So no matter how they coax me, I'll stay right here. Yes, 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 we'll stay right here. Each morning I meet a merry appetite with me on sign. Madman Month. He's a native population that civilization is fine. 903. And some educated savages holler from a bamboo tree. Hey, did Tracy, you catch mumbles yet? That civilization is a thing for me to see. Oh, bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Bongo, bongo, I'm so happy in the jungle I refuse to go. Don't want no crazy auto drivers knocking me on my ear. Life is safer in the jungle. I'll stay right here. Yes, 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 we'll stay right here. They have things like the atom bomb. So I think I'll stay where I am. Civilization. No, 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 no. We'll stay right here. Down in the Congo. Poor Miriam. Poor Miriam. 
neglected using Miriam. So it singing smile had no winning style. Come to me, my merry golly baby. Not me. Why not? You'll see. So folks don't be like Miriam. Use Miriam. Accident one by three to one. Just recently, families from coast to coast, thousands of people, were asked to compare new Pepsi and toothpaste with the brands they've been using at home. By an overwhelming majority, by an average of three to one, they've preferred new Pepsi over any other brand they tried. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsi won one by three to one. For its cool, minty flavor that lingers on and on. Families who made comparison tests. Joe's Pepsodent, three to one. For making the breath so lastingly clean. Families who made comparison tests. Joe's Pepsodent, three to one. And for cleaning teeth better, giving bright new sparkle to your smile. Families who made comparison tests. Joe's Pepsodent, three to one. So for new pleasure in brushing your teeth, new pleasure in the results you'll see, try cool, minty, new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium. The three to one favorite with families all over America. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using Miriam, so her sing and smile has the winning style. Come to me, my merry guy, baby. Okay, some smile. I'll say, oh, oh folks, just be like Miriam, use Miriam. Say, I'll bet that Pepsin sells almost as well as the product I sell. Pepsin. I Miss Vera Bay. <laughs> Why, Miss Bay, if you hadn't said you who, I'd never have recognized you. The way that Bob Hope describes such a lovely, beautiful, shy, charming girl. I wish I weren't a married man with five daughters nearly as old as you. <laughs> oh, you're doing well. You really think your daughters are nearly as old as me? Yes, I think so. Of course, I never added their ages up. What are you doing, kicked out, Papa? Yeah. Oh, Miss Page, please, I'm sorry. I was just kidding. Really, I think you're stunning. Oh. Maybe tonight we could go for a walk. You've got that new look. Oh, well, I've got to go for a ride. I've got that old idea. Miss <laughs> yes, Bay, you're dynamite, aren't you? Tell me, what kind of perfume is that you're wearing? Oh, this uh, is my own special invention, J. Parnell Thomas Number no. Five. Uh, J. Parnell Thomas Number no. Five. Uh, yes, what is this? And you want to investigate further? <laughs> I'm so glad you like me, Mr. Cantor. I thought you'd be on your program sometime. I'd work very quickly. Well, I might be able to squeeze you in. Oh, you might. Well, that way I'd work even quicker. <laughs> I don't know if I could take it, Miss Bage. You see, I've worked with some beautiful girls in my time. You know, Dickfeld Folly. Oh, uh, well, never mind that. Just tell me, how do I stack up? <laughs> like an old pile of war surplus. <laughs> I'll miss you in a year. I'll tell you. You have to tell your eyelids to blink. <laughs> Wait a minute. This program is like information, please. Everybody has answers. <laughs> well, that's not just Kenny. You see, I should great on your program. I have a trigger mind. Yes, yeah, so and when you're through with it, give it back the trigger. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Miss Vega. I just said it so you wouldn't miss Bob Hope too much. Oh. Do you do you actually miss him? Oh, yes, constantly. You see, Mr. Tanner, I'm working on a Christmas gift for him. You're making Bob's Christmas gift? Yes. How is it coming along? Oh, fine. Of course, I may need a longer fuse. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're making a bomb for Bob Hope's Christmas present? Oh, yes, I'm so mad at him. He wouldn't take me along to Princess Elizabeth's wedding. Oh, but Miss Vega, that's a big social event. All that nobility and everything, you know. Well, so what? I've been smoking Prince Albert for years. Believe <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm amazed. I thought you were the orchid champagne and Granger rough cut type. <laughs> so you're angry at Bob for not taking you on the trip, huh? Uh, yes, I... No, well, really, I'm glad to tell you the truth. The last time I took a boat trip, I was taking a stroll on the deck and I almost drowned. Wait a minute. You were just taking a stroll on the deck and you almost drowned? How could that happen? Oh, some darn fool yelled, man overboard. (laughs) 
And now, folks, to check the reaction of the public to this all-star program, we take you to the home of a couple of typical listeners, 79 Wistful Vista, the home of Sibber, McGee, and Molly. Can't you hear the radio yet, McGee? Not practically. There's just one little thing wrong with Molly. What's that? It won't work. <laughs> Otherwise, I want to see. Maybe if I connect the antenna condenser to the grid leak supercharger and boost the static collector hey, a little more. Maybe the tubes are stopped up. Huh? Did you try blowing through them? Huh? I know you usually blow out all the tubes first. No, no, no. That, <laughs> that won't help, Molly. You see, I'm changing this thing over to short wave tonight so I can hear Bob Hope, the comedian. Oh. <laughs> The paper says he's broadcasting from England. From England? Uh-huh. My goodness, that's an awfully long trip. Ah, uh, distance means nothing to hope. That guy takes a trip to England like I go down to the drugstore. Oh, in a sweatshirt and bedroom slippers? <laughs> Heavenly days, what a way to travel. No, no, I don't mean that, Molly. Hey, I wonder if Hope will come on talking with an English accent and wearing a manacle. Oh, you don't mean... You don't mean manacle, McGee. You mean a monocle. Monocle? <laughs> You're confused, Tipsy. A monocle is a newspaper. <laughs> the London Daily Monocle is one of the Oh, McGee, that's the Chronicle. Oh, Molly, please, don't tell me about Chronicles. You heard Doc Gamble tell me if I didn't cut out cigars, my Chronicle tubes would get stopped oh. up and I wouldn't... <laughs> the word is Bronicle, dearie, and it's pronounced Bronchial. Bronchial? And what was that horse I'd have won five bucks at the carnival on if he hadn't sold me in the top row of the seat? A Bronco, a bucking Bronco. <laughs> I believe that was a Bronco at that. Well, then, Dad read it. What in the first place did I say wrong? You said Bob Hope would broadcast wearing a manacle. Manacles are handcuffed. Mm-hmm. So what if he does? He could do that show with his hands tied behind him. <laughs> I got, hey, I better get this radio fixed. This thing ought to bring in short wave, okay? It cost 90 bucks. Money was worth more back in 1924, too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it just isn't a short wave set, Gary. Some of them aren't, you know. Well, it says so right on this one, kiddo. See right here? It says AC and DC. First one's for local stuff, of course, A.C., around the city. <laughs> what does the D.C. stand for? <laughs> D.C. is distant country. <laughs> McGee, I didn't realize you knew so much about it. Oh, shucks, I've been fooling around with radio as long as I can remember. Well, you've been fooling around with that radio right there as long as I can remember. Yep. I remember when I was just a little kid back in Georgia, I built the first receiving set in town. Years ahead of my time. Mm, did it work all right? Never could tell. I was so far ahead of time, they hadn't even invented broadcasting stations. Say, <laughs> hey, look, sweetheart, who told you Bob Hope was broadcasting from England, anyhow? I didn't hear that. Why, it's right here in the paper. It says right here. Oh, my God. What's the matter? It says, Bob Hope broadcasting from England next week. Oh. Well, hey, somebody's got to be. I, I wonder who's on your show tonight. Well, don't look now, dearie, but we're not. We're off. Huh? Oh, I see what you mean. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you, Fibber McGee and Molly. You were wonderful, and now? I'll get it. Hello? This is Long Distance. London, England is calling Bob Hope. London, England? You must be the king calling Bob. Gosh, what do I do? I'll take it, operator. Here's your coffee. The king, I'm so excited I can hardly talk. Hello, King. Bob's on his way over there, King. He'll be there tomorrow, King. Is there anything I can do for you, King? You might dig me up a date with a cute little queen. Well, it's Professor Colonna. <laughs> so you're in England, Professor. Yes, and I gotta talk fast. Why must you talk fast? The British are coming. <laughs> Colonna. <laughs> Colonna, tell me. Are idiots lonely? Yes. Uh, shall we hold hands? <laughs> now, listen, Hope. Hello, no, this isn't Bob Hope. I'll give you a hint who I am. Listen to this. Potatoes are cheaper. Tomatoes are cheaper. Oh, at last. Who? <laughs> who is that? President Truman. <laughs> Look, stop this nonsense. This is Eddie Cantor. Are you really in London? Yes, Cantor. My train's just putting in now. <laughs> Kelowna, what kind of a train whistle is that? <laughs> it's the friendship train. <laughs> oh, Kelowna, you're in a fog. 
No, I'm in London. What's your excuse? Wait a minute. What are you doing in London anyway, Professor? Well, I'm in charge of the Princess Elizabeth's wedding, Cather, and I can hardly wait. As soon as the ceremony is over, just think I get to kiss all the barmaids in London. Wait a minute, Colonna. It's the bridesmaids you're supposed to kiss. What, what do the barmaids have to do with it? <laughs> I don't ask questions. I just have fun. <laughs> Say, hey, Tanner, I, I gotta hang up now. I'm going fox hunting. You're going fox hunting? Well, what's all that noise? Can't get my horse out of the phone booth. <laughs> There's a noise of galloping over the hill, and the huntsman's horn ring merry and free. See, here they come with a view, hello, hounds and horses and huntsmen too, galloping, 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 galloping by. The horses trample the hounds, baby. The riders' coats are scarlet and gay. The huntsman cry, say, you have seen the fox go by. Galloping, 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 galloping by. I look as stupid as I can be, and never a word do they get from me. Until an angle they take the rain and stop the rollicking hunt again. Galloping, 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 galloping by. No, no, that's the wrong horn. Tally ho! Get up! That's the water of the coast. I have old. And the cow's second. Oops! There goes the cow's in the front. Hope went back to look for the quarter. Gonna be a tight finish. They're crossing the line all together. That's the Mahali. That's that. Boogle, boogle. Over the highway. Catch the hook. That's the Mahaka. And the winner, S.C. E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. Or would I be telling you, no, not I, that I saw the fox go wearily by, wearily fancy worn and spent, would I be telling the way he went, galloping, 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 no, not I. President won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families from coast to coast, thousands of people, compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with brands they've been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent toothpaste to Ethereum over any other brand they tried. The N.W. Armstrong family of 5101 Melrose Avenue, Los Angeles, preferred new Pepsodent on every single count. Mrs. Armstrong says, Our little daughter, Terry, just loves the taste of Pepsodent. In fact, we all do. And my husband is convinced there's nothing like Pepsodent for cleaning his breath. As for me, I found Pepsodent makes my teeth look brighter than ever before. And family after family agree with the Armstrongs. Yes, with families who made comparison tests. Pepsodent won by three to one. Get it without delay. Ladies and gentlemen, Amos and Andy were supposed to be on this program tonight, but they haven't shown up yet. They did tell me that their pal, the Kingfish, well, they borrowed an old, broken-down, second-hand car so they could drive to the studio. I wonder if they're still on their way. Uh, boys, how long do you figure we've been riding now? Oh, about ten minutes. Then I guess it's safe to put it in second gear. Ah, ah. Knock my hat right off. Well, it sure is nice to be riding on the Bob Hope show this week. You know, next week he's going to be broadcasting from England. Yeah. Uh, say, King Fish, look, there's NBC Studios right there. Yeah, and here's the parking space. All oh, right, I'll stop the car. 
Well, you miss NBC and stop right in front of CBS. <laughs> Oh, uh, here's another parking see us right here. I say, fellas, while you two are talking to Carl, why don't I run into NBC there and tell him he's here? Oh, uh, yeah, you must go. We don't want to make other people on the bar folks go mad with us. Well, fellas, I'll get on in the studio. Good idea, Amos. Go ahead. Uh, well, then, uh, now to park the car. The fellow I bought it from told me that I got to use the foot brake and the emergency brake, too. Yeah, well, you think you can back it in there? You ain't got too much space. Yeah, well, I'll show you how to get it in between them two cars. Uh, stick your head out the window there, and I'll go on back. Now, guide me in there. Okay. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Whoa! <laughs> Cut your wheels and go forward. Uh, tell me how I'm doing. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Whoa! Uh, do you think you could get the whoa just a little ahead of the impact? <laughs> well, I'm going to try it again here now. Okay. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Whoa! It all work that way, neither do it. <laughs> you know something, the way you go and you can get a job in a parking lot? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't think this, uh, this, this emergency brake ain't working. That's the trouble. I've been pulling on the thing. What do you pull on? This thing right here. That. I've been wondering why that ventilator on the hood has been flipping up and down. <laughs> well, what i got to do is get in here. Now, let me back up a little bit. Oh, I know what the trouble is. I go in forward in second gear. Let me get the thing in low once and try. Watch this. Yeah, you can even hit them better that way. Yeah. Now, Andy, you better step out the car and direct me here. Yeah. I'll get out and stand behind that fire hydrant. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it, sir. Come on back. Hold it, hold it. Your bumpers is locked. I'll pull up. Uh, how's that, Andy? Is the bumper clear? Yeah, it's clear off the car. <laughs> I think I'll go forward now. That'll do the job. All right. Come on. Come on. Whoa! We come out together that time. <laughs> well, at least we got the car parked. Now, come on, Andy. We better get on in the studio here. Yeah. Hey, there's Eddie Kinsey coming out of NBC now. Well, hello, hello there, Andy and Kinsey. Hello, Mr. Cantor. Yeah, we come down to help out Mr. Hope. We just had a hard time parking the car, but that's oh. over. Now for the program. Too late, boys. That's over, too. Oh. <laughs> and Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, ordinarily at this time, Bob has a serious message for you. We're fortunate to have in his place tonight your New York correspondent, Walter Winchell. Attention, Mr. and Mrs. United States. When I am recruited to help exploit the March of Dimes, the Red Cross, Navy Relief, or the Runyon Cancer Fund and other causes, the people of the stage, screen, and radio help most and do the hardest work. We on the Runyon Committee have never had to ask these wonderful people to help us. They always say, as Bob Hope said, what can we do to help you? Thanks then again to the show folks and to all of you in 48 states for your gracious and generous help. We have already turned over $675,000, including $25,000 to war veterans in California. By next December the 10th, we will have allocated $1 million in the four corners of the 48 states and the Middle West. We are nearing the $1.5 million mark now with not a penny deducted for expenses of any kind. The Runyon Fund is also grateful to the coin machine industries of Chicago. These fine people pledge at least a quarter of a million dollars to our fund every year. For accelerating the efforts in this terrible war on cancer, you have my deepest thanks as a citizen. For doing it in affectionate memory of Alfred Damon Runyon, You have the gratitude of all of us on the newspapers who are the guardians of his...